Thank you, Robert, and thank you very much for inviting me to be a part of the panel discussion. I should say that I had a call with Robert uh, about a week ago uh, to make sure that um, what he wanted was what I was going to deliver, and his last statements to me got me really concerned because he said, I want you to be provocative and challenging. Now, what I would say to you is that it's a little bit more difficult to be pro provocative and challenging in industry, uh, as an industry representative, than it is uh, than the presentation we just heard from, uh, from Julia. But I will do my best to, uh, to raise some of the, uh, the key areas that I think will contribute to a sustainable healthcare system in the UK and in the future, and how the pharmaceutical industry in particular can contribute, and perhaps some food for thought in our Q&A session. So uh, in GSK R&D, um, we obviously are responsible for discovering innovative, valuable medicines and ensuring that they bring benefits to patients as well as the NHS and society. And GSK is a global company. Uh, we operate out of over 150 companies. The UK is a very important uh, investment uh, a country for us. We invested in 2014 almost a quarter of our R&D budget in the United Kingdom. So the subject of a sustainable healthcare system is of considerable importance to us. But I, in the next few comments that I will make, I speak not just on, on behalf of GSK, but probably uh, the trends that are going on in discovery and development across the industry. <coughs> So uh, Robert asked me to talk about what are some of the trends that will contribute to a sustainable healthcare system. So I'm going to frame that around four big questions and what we're doing in each of those areas. The first is, what is the right biological target? The second is, what is the right molecule to intervene at that biological target? The third is, how quickly can we dem demonstrate proof of concept in early clinical trials? And the fourth is, how will we be able to demonstrate value and differentiate in the right patient population? Each of these areas are areas that the industry is focused on. Improving target quality. Last year we published a study that showed that uh, if we were able to just increase the number of targets to 50% that had a genetic um, phenotype, uh, was supported by uh, genetic in, um, data, we would be able to improve um, the, uh, the, the success and um, uh, reduce attrition and also um, reduce the cost of uh, development. Uh, the success rate in clinical development we think we could improve by up to 50% and we're estimating that we could improve overall cost of, uh, the cost of, uh, of research and development by some 25%, just by improving the number of targets and the confidence that we have in those biological targets. So to help us improve target quality, we have established a centre for therapeutic target validation in collaboration with EBI and the Sanger Institute to harness the power of big data and genome sequencing. And the data generated is going to be shared openly, and we hope other companies will also be involved in this pre-competitive uh, collaboration. The second area, five years ago, less than a third of the candidates that we selected, the molecules that we selected to intervene at the biological target, would even reach a clinical study, a first in human study. Today, we've improved that to over 60%, but we are working on efforts to get up to a 90% plus um, uh, probability of success once we, once we nominate that candidate, and we're making good um, progress in, in doing that. I think obvious, it's obvious that if you're able to improve your success of the molecule intervening at the target, you will overall improve success of research and development and reduce the cost, which contributes to a sustainable healthcare system. Getting better information on the probability of success. I mean, it's great to see in the UK that we are continuing to improve the number of high-quality phase one and phase two studies that we do on our experimental studies. We are investing in biomarkers and novel experimental medicine paradigms in, in collaboration with the NHS and academia in order to really get the answers of have we selected the right target, is it clinically meaningful, is it having an effect on the pathophysiology of the disease. 
If we're able to, to, do, to be right more often, as an old boss of mine often said to me, get, be right more, more of the time, Annette, uh, then we will be able to reduce attrition and, and reduce costs. As we progress through the development of the medicine, the fourth big area is we begin to develop what the value proposition is going to be. And we want to understand how best to use medicines and how they will make a difference to patients in the real life setting, that is real world clinical studies. It's important to understand how patients use our medicines and how they use them and how a broad group of, 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 of uh, patients manage their condition on a day-to-day -day basis. An example I'd like to give you, uh, which also links together integrated care, is we've pioneered approach, an approach with the Salford Lung, Lung Study, partnering with healthcare professionals and academics to deliver uh, a study in COPD and asthma to look, at, um, to look at a medicine that was actually not approved at the time, to look at its effectiveness in a general population and representing clinical practice as we see it today. This required the setting up of a really connected healthcare environment with 80 GP surgeries, two major hospitals and over 120 pharmacies. It also required um, the, uh, the opportunity to, to actually encompass many new clinical staff in the NHS um, and, train, and, and they were trained as they were incorporated into this study. We hope that this will give us a better idea of how medicines are actually used in day-to-day -day life on top of standard therapies or alone, as well as improving patient outcomes for the future. This will support better effective use of NHS resources. I guess the five, a couple more areas that I'd like to just touch on on trends. Um, one is we're seeing much greater patient involvement in medicines development. And this is an important component of sustainable healthcare because it helps to ensure that as we develop medicines, we're actually targeting what the real patient need is. But in addition to that, it can help with non-adherence if and when the medicine is approved and in general clinic, clinical practice. One final trend that's going on in the industry which will help with sustainable healthcare is that we are in the process of investing in key manufacturing technologies in order to transform how we manufacture and supply medicines around the world in the future. And while I don't have time to say much more about that, that clearly is all about trying to improve quality, reduce cost and increase access of our medicines more effectively around the world. Touching on in the last few minutes here precision medicines because this was another area that Robert wanted me to, to mention. I mean, we clearly are doing much more research now, um, moving beyond oncology, where we've already many medicines that target specific um, stratified patient populations. We're now moving into many other diseases where we have the evidence to be able to target an experimental medicine into a specific patient population. Not only does that bring benefits to patients, it also brings benefits to pay payers um, and to the NHS. So I think everybody understands the concept of non-responder populations. In the past, the model was one medicine for everybody. Today, we're seeing precision medicine um, making inroads um, into other therapeutic areas like immunoinflammation. In rheumatoid arthritis today, we can characterize patients earlier through arthroscopy and TNF expression. In rare diseases, we often have, we actually know what we're targeting genetically and can actually design and target and potentially even cure the disease. In GSK, our approach and around the industry is to really target our medicines to the population of patients most likely to respond. This clearly has a focus on increasing access, but it also reduces waste by treating patients who are, by not treating patients who are not going to respond. To the medicines. I'm going to finish up by just a few maybe key themes that I think J Julie actually brought up in her um, presentation. Collaboration between industry and academia is, and NHS is absolutely critical for a sustained healthcare and sustainable healthcare environment in the future. Julie talked about research in the NHS. We believe that research is still not an integral part of NHS activity across the board and that if we could improve in that area, then collectively that would, be, that would benefit our healthcare system. 
Investing in the UK healthcare data infrastructure, you're going to hear more about that um, from uh, other panel members, so that we can maximise the potential of the data that we are generating to support research and patient care. And in fact, actually, the Salford Lung Study would not have been made possible without the Northwest e health connected healthcare environment. That's critical to being able to actually set this whole study up as a collaborative um, venture. And another example, really, with how we want to link care, healthcare records of patients um, to our benefit, there's an example in NHS Scotland with uh, acute pancreatitis patients where we're identifying high risk patients who might develop complications and require hospital admission. Such research allows us to the potential to enable earlier intervention, for example, by a GP supporting improved care for high-risk patients. So I'm going to finish by saying um, it is all about innovation and research, actually. And uh, I totally agree with, with Julie's comments. Um, it's the same in industry. Innovation and research are absolutely critical to de delivering the transformational medicines of the future. Without a sustainable healthcare system uh, and collectively working together in a much more connected way, I don't think we will achieve the ambition uh, that we all have here in the, in the UK. So thank you for your attention.